Join the team. Hey team, this is the 2019 Gen Con video, and we're going to do this one a little bit different this year. And I want to show some of the cool stuff. Before we get into the videos, I want to show some of the cool stuff that you're going to be able to get when you're at Gen Con. And this is only a small, small selection of things. I also did acquire uh, a few new games as well, which I do not have um, here on the table. And some of these things are going to be con-exclusive items you're going to be able to get as well. Some of them are con-exclusive. Some of them are just some other really cool pieces that I was able to pick up this year. Then we're going to get into the videos. You can see what uh, Gen Con is all about, what you'll experience while you're at a con like Gen Con. To start off, I am wearing the Gen Con exclusive Off-World t-shirt. We did go over this in the off-world video that we did for those Gen Con exclusive uh, items that they have. They've got cups, they got t-shirts. This is the 2019 Gen Con shirt. These are the books. Whenever you get a badge at Gen Con, they now give you these little coupon books that you will pick up, and within this coupon book you'll go through, and there are various different things that you can get. Money off of different booths. Some things even in here just get you straight up free dice, free items. Uh, free food at local, you know, places that you can eat at. There's all kinds of stuff that you'll find here in these coupon books you're going to get. And then you're going to get a Gen Con program book, which looks like this. It's just a decent sized little magazine type book. And it's going to give you all the different types of things that are going on at Gen Con. It's going to tell you about all the buttons you can collect in the Button Bazaar, uh, maps of the convention center so you know where you're going if you're trying to find different things, the convention hall map. And then there's some other promotional things that you'll find here in the Gen Con program book. So these are two items that you want to make sure you don't forget to pick up after you do get your badge, uh, whether it was mailed to you or you stood in the unbelievably long line this year. Please just have the badges mailed to you. Uh, it's just so much better that way. You don't have to stand in that giant line. And with that, we talked a little bit about one of these coupons getting you free dice. Well, one of those is for Crystal Castle. And I'll go right here. Every year, Crystal Castle does an exclusive Gen Con die. And it is this die right here. Bear, why don't you go ahead and load up the overhead video, and Bear's going to get in on all the items that we have here on the table, so you can see each one of these up close. But this is the Gen Con exclusive Crystal Cass, Crystal Castle die. They did this a little bit differently this year. On one side, it does say Gen Con 2019. On the, I'll, I'll say the crit. And then on the one, it they actually branded their brand. It says CrystalCast.com 2019. I believe this is the first time they've done this. I haven't seen this in the past. Or at least I don't remember. I don't remember them doing that. Maybe they did it last year. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. So that's the Crystal Cast die. What you're going to find here are the special exclusive buttons. These buttons come from Pazio, who makes the Pathfinder game, which you'll find right here. And there are four exclusive buttons, one for each main day, Thursday through Sunday, that they do every year. And all you have to do is just walk up, and they're handing these out. They have huge bins of them. But every year, you do get four completely unique ex Gen Con exclusive buttons. And they are branded Gen Con with the year right on each one of those buttons. Let's take a look at another one here. You can see every single one of them have the little Gen Con uh, branding there with the year, which is really cool. And it makes them kind of an exclusive collectible thing because they do brand them with Gen Con and that year, okay? So those are the buttons that you can get exclusive. We went through the die. Here's a little fun thing that I got from Beetle and Grimm's as I went uh, to their booth. And on one side it says D&D &D Live, The Descent Wizards uh, 2019, and then Beetle and Grimm's here on the front. This was not, I, I don't believe this was a, a con exclusive thing. It was just something cool that I think you got. Uh, if you purchase something from them at the con, you got this really cool little metal sundial here, which can be used for lots of different things. But I thought that was cool, so I thought I'd put that here in the video. I did get some Wormwood D6 dice. They do have a set. Um, actually, I've got uh, two of the greens in here. I picked up one extra green. But you can get a, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dice set. They got them for like $10, and every single one of them is completely different. Great, high-quality Wormwood dice, and they do have the Wormwood symbol there on the 6 for the crit. I thought this was a pretty cool little pack. Not con-exclusive um, to my knowledge, but it's something that I found pretty neat and I wanted to pick up. 
Let's go right to these dice, which were con exclusive, and these are the Gen Genevieve dice. These dice are sweet. There were two sets that they had, and I'll just read here, uh, gatekeepergaming.com. We've got here on the back of each one of these. This was the Genevieve's dice set, so the first year that we do have the official Gen Con logo Genevieve this was the Genevieve set. These are super sweet dice. Really, really awesome. And I'm going to explain this case. These dice are really just amazing. I mean, really high quality dice. They got good weight, good roll, and just absolutely beautiful how these turned out. So, so awesome. So this was the Genevieve set. And this was the Convergence dice set that was also a con exclusive. And these were very hot. It was hard to come across those. I was very lucky. I literally got, no joke team, this was literally the last set they had at the booth that I was able to pick up. Uh, Gatekeeper Games here. We've got the little um, tag in inside for the company. And then these cases are really, really cool. This is a new case that they have come out with, and you'll notice that it is a little bit larger than a standard case. There's all kinds of things this case does. You can keep it in here if you want a seven, or if you want a seven, or I mean, you probably fit a couple more dice in there, but you can also pop this off, take off the bottom, turn it around, and it has hinges on the other side, and then it gives you more room. So if you wanted to fill this up with more dice, you can do that. You can also flip this over and set it right here and use it as a miniature flight stand. So if you're playing RPGs, you've got your dice, you need a flight stand, you can pull that out and put your miniature right up on top. That's why it's designed like that. It also has these ridges across, almost like the top of a castle, and you can use that as a card holder if there's just like a single card or a couple cards you just need to hold. Uh, like let's say it's your spells, you do, you do have the ability of holding uh, three cards all the way across one way or the other. I thought that was pretty cool as well that, you know, it's designed in a way that it's very, very usable and there's lots of different things you can do with this case. They will be selling these cases next year, just a single case, but if you wanted to get these special dice cases this year, you had to get the exclusive con dice. So I did get the Genevieve and then as well as the Convergence and these are just sweet. These, the black and uh, glitter they have, they're absolutely amazing. They are clear, but they're like full of, of glitter, right? So you can see the empty space in there, but they're full of glitter. And then they just have um, black kind of ghosted into one side. And it's a real crisp, like shiny black. These, these are absolutely an amazing set. So glad I was able to get them. So lucky. Yes! Okay, let's hit this right here. This is a really cool little item, and I can't remember the name of the booth, but there's a booth that's always there in Gen Con. It's generally in the middle of the floor, and they sell incredibly high-quality leather, um, just different pieces, right? They have medicine bags. They have full leather gowns. They have bracers. They have, they have all kinds of stuff. They have mugs. They have Stein wraps. They've always had these little potion bottles that are wrapped in this high quality leather with nice buckles and I've always wanted one so I went ahead and picked one up this year and you know I can use this for lots of different things I can even put my drink in there if I wanted to really tell you the truth uh, you can use it for cosplay you can take it to your friend's house when you're doing some RPG and you can put your drink in there I mean there's lots of things you can do uh, with these I've always thought they were cool so I went ahead and picked up one of those the next thing I want to hit is the exclusive Sun King beer that they do every year for Gen Con. This was Brutron 9000, taking it to 9000. This was a tart gold ale, which uh, I actually really liked because I've really been into to sours lately. I've been drinking a lot of sours. Uh, and this being a tart uh, was, was really nice. They got awesome artwork on the can, and it was fun this year. They did two different types of prints, and everybody voted. This is the one that obviously got put on the can. And this is the Gen Con exclusive brew from Sun King Brewery. Here were two new things they did as well this year, where at all the concession stands you could get these awesome, super thick plastic cups. And these aren't just cheapy, like, you can see, um, like, these are very stiff, like, they're quality plastic drinking cups. These are going to last the test of time. And they had a small size as well as a large size that you can get. I didn't actually get it for filling up 
just your standard pops. I got it for the cups. I wanted these collectible Gen Con cups with Genevieve there on it, as well as the Gen Con branding. That's why I got these cups. We're going to go right here to the Wild Bill. This was something that I got to be able to refill. So these cups were awesome. This is the double barrel Wild Bill cup that you got. It's got a pretty sweet logo that's kind of engraved into the front there. Maybe hard to see on camera, but it's engraved right in the front. Nice big silver cup. Nice quality metal cup. You know, it's just got a good look and feel and make to it. And these went for $20. And how it worked is it would get a little tag put on it. You'd buy the cup for $20, bucks, you get a little tag. And you could refill this cup with as much as you wanted all day for free. And it wasn't just general pop. It was Wild Bill's different types of sodas, which are kind of like root beers. They had like a vanilla one. They had original sarsaparilla. They had a Rocky Road uh, traditional root beer which was fantastic they had a grape um and they had a couple other ones they had quite a few different selections in these big barrels that were in the front of this thing and you just go up and get in line and fill up and you could drink all that you wanted over the course of that day for free or you could buy an entire gen con pass which looked a little different was a tag that hung off and you literally would just go and refill the whole entire con as much as you wanted that was a great deal and it was, you know, I mean, Wild Bill soda is absolutely delicious. It, it doesn't get much better than that. It was fantastic. So I do have two of those cups here, and they had different types of straws that you could get. This was kind of their rainbow style straw, which was pretty awesome. And then they had the silver. They had one that was a black color. They had one that was a copper. And they also had different styles of cups. I really just preferred the silver, but they did have ones that looked more copper, like a copper cup. They had ones that looked kind of like a, a flat gray, kind of matte sort of style with like an American flag on it. They had all kinds of different styles of cups that you could you know, choose from. This one was the cheapest one, I believe, at 20 uh, They did have a single barrel that might have been a little cheaper, but I, I think this was one of the cheapest ones at 20 And I just like the look of this one the best. I really like just the, kind of the all traditional silver look I thought was pretty cool. So that was the Wild Bill's Cups. We're going to hit this right here. We did, for the first time this year, True Dungeon, which was a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't know anything about that, you can go to the website and check it out. It's pretty much like a real, live D&D uh, &D adventure that you're going through, and you'll do combat, you'll solve puzzles. I don't want to really talk about that too much and give it away, but you can go online and check out what that is. Uh, very fun. A lot, lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, we had fun doing that. It will give you these little chips and tokens, so I do have quite a few of those here in the bag that you earn, and then at the end you get to, you know, you get to earn some more. So that's pretty cool. A little exclusive thing you get to walk away with, and I was the bard for that run through. That was the character that I played in the group. I believe there was ten of us that were in the group, and and I was the bard. So I had a lot of fun uh, making up silly songs and singing them for the group as they were doing combat so I could uh, you know help with our modifiers so that was a uh, that was pretty fun okay we do have the uh, off-world Gen Con mug I thought was awesome Genevieve on the front Gen Con on the back nice yellow pretty sweet looking something else that was super cool are these candles right here that they were at Gen Con Epic Adventure Candle Company makes these I do have four of them they did have one Gen Con exclusive one which was called the Dragon's Den which is right here and it will only be produced, I believe, through November of this year, and then it will never be made again. Or at least, you know, this scent or, or you know, whatever this, this scent is. Ah, the smell of Gen Con. So each one of these candles is a pretty phenomenal thing. It is a soy-based candle. They tell you that it will last about 30 to 34 hours, I believe, is what they... We'll just go with 30 here for the video, but you're going to get around the 30 hour mark for your burn time on these candles. And they do offer a real wood wick, which is very cool. The smell, uh, by the way, is amazing. Each one of these is, it is absolutely an amazing smell. If any of you have ever got any of these candles, you know what I'm talking about. We'll grab this one here, and they each have a little bit of a different theme, and they're designed to kind of theme with your RPG experiences and your games. This one is called the Dwarven Forge. They each have a little bit of a different color of tin as well as a different branding. Ooh, that Dwarven Forge is amazing. And they do have the real wood wicks. 
This is why these are cool. As you burn them, they kind of flicker and crackle and pop like a real like real wood would in in a fire. So it's the same kind of concept with these, when you get these real wood wicks, and they do kind of spark and, and crack and pop as they burn. Super awesome. Really add to the ambience as you're doing your gaming. So I got the Gen Con exclusive, the Dwarven Forge. I got the Crossroads in and the super popular and completely sold out Pipe Leaf. This one, woo, that one's amazing. Well, they're all amazing, but Pipe Leaf has got a little special, uh, little special extra something to it. So Pipe Leaf sold out uh, pretty quick, but I was able to grab one of those. So that's pretty awesome. So Epic Adventure Candle Company, definitely recommend go checking those guys out. And again, if you want the exclusive Gen Con one, you're going to need to get that from them before that completely sells out and is no longer made. Okay? Check those guys out. Super awesome. I wanted to call this out because I literally have no idea who made these, but I got them in the Gen Con auction as well as quite a few other little things. I got, I scored a Indiana Jones TSR box set as well as a almost mint condition TSR Indiana Jones full miniature set unpainted. It's like mint in the box. I couldn't have been, I mean, ecstatic. So, so awesome. Yeah, Indiana Jones, buddy. Yeah, I know. All right, so these dice trays were super sweet, and they were a couple other items I scored in the auction for a pretty low price point. But I just, you know, I, I wanted to put them in the video because whoever made these, they really have a high level of craftsmanship and quality. They're absolutely fantastic. They're made of wormy maple. This is bloodwood on top, and I can't remember the name of this wood. Uh, uh, Malbar... Malbo wood or something like that. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the name of this wood is on the top, but it is an expensive wood. Uh, all of these woods are high quality woods, and they got a nice little padded felt interior. Um, and I just, you know, it came as a set, and they fit kind of inside of each other. They're just absolutely fantastic. You can see the the corners there, the quality of the. I'm not sure exactly what the term of that is either, but this little wedge here that's put in the corners of these. Just really top-notch, beautiful dice trays that I picked up in that auction. So, absolutely fantastic. If you are someone who made these and you are part of the team, please reach out to me because I would love to be able to uh, let everybody know about your stuff because it, these are absolutely amazing. Okay, last thing on the table is a couple pieces of cool artwork, and then I'm going to load into the videos for Gen Con. This here, and I'm going to get his card. Um, he's an artist... Uh, the, the, the name of the website is www.kehasuk.com. His first name is Chris. There is his card. And this is absolutely phenomenal artwork. And the more I look at this, the more I'm just tantalized by what this guy has done here. It's just absolutely amazing. And this is the uh, a piece that he did from Naruto that shows kind of both paths there uh, from that series. And just there's so much detail. It's just absolutely amazing artwork. And he has multiple different ones. He had one from Mario Brothers that I really wanted, but it was sold out by the time I got to him. And I'm definitely going to pick it up at some point because... They have a little bit of a different operating model. They only sell these, he said, four times a year, and they only go for 24 hours. So there's four times a year that the store is open for 24 hours, and they sell stuff. The next time is supposed to be near the end of, end of November, early December. I'm trying to get those exact dates. He did give me the date of December the 1st, but that date may change, so you're going to want to definitely go to that website that I gave you there. And I'm sure that will be communicated through the website. I will definitely be getting the Mario version of this that he's done. The, the, the kind of the Nintendo, it's not just Mario. The Nintendo version of this and maybe possibly other ones. But this Naruto was just so, so awesome. I could not resist of picking this up. And I will be framing that up and putting that in my son's room because he is a huge Naruto fan. Um, so that's where that's going to be going. I may actually be getting myself another one for the uh, for the studio here when I when he opens up the store and I can uh, and I can purchase some more. And then we went ahead and picked up the Gen Con 51, I believe, is what this one is. Yes, this is the Gen Con 51 painting. 
Every year they do a community painting. Both of my kids and my wife always contribute. Sometimes I get in on a little bit of this. I think I got in on this one. And we actually put our initials really tiny into these. So our, our names, our initials are actually in this, in this painting. So we always drop by to pick up this each year. I hope they continue to do this. I would love to just get one of these every single year. And it is numbered. You can see here this is 8 of 35. So they only made 35 of these this year and this is 8 of 35 and then it is signed there by the actual artist that does the, the drawing that is there that you paint and then fill in and then she obviously goes back and I believe she touches up some things here and there before it's finally locked down and printed. So absolutely amazing. We're going to continue to do this and hopefully we're able to get one of these prints each year um, as, as they continue to do those. All right. So that's all the stuff that we got on the table here. It's all the con exclusives, plus some other cool things that I was able to come about this year and get bear scored some really cool stuff as well. And now we're going to load right into the Gen Con videos where you can see some of the area outside where some fun is going on. They have the beer garden as well as some cool stuff that you'll find within the convention center. So this has been the Gen Con 2019 video. I hope everybody enjoyed the run through of the items that we had here that we came away with and stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, it's early morning, about ready to go in. Just hit up the Quills coffee. It's early morning stuff. Got people waiting in line here to get some breakfast. And then we will go in. There was no early access for press this year, which was a little bit disappointing. Uh, however, we will get in at the same time as everybody else at 10 a.m. We'll start hitting the booths. Oh yeah, I forgot about your 
I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it out. Yes. You, <laughs> so I'm hoping to play games with at least 70 to 80% of you, which will be a long, long, long game. Do I have time? Look at that. I've got a couple minutes left. I don't have any shots, any, like, you know, sideshow or tricks to show you. Maybe my thumb one. This is a good trick. Anyway, everybody, I want you to have the best possible Gen Con. It's the best four days of gaming, and it's the best four days of friendship, in my view. We just did the do not run chant. The uh, classic every year safety chant. Let's hope that that chant actually works this year and no one does run because there's always one there's always one that runs and we're moving Okay, let's, let's move out and see some of our buddies. Let's go over here. It's going to be flowing against everybody. Bear, activate the walking cam. Here they are, Wormwood, right off the bat, as promised. First thing, there's Bobby. Bobby Nation. Good to see you. man. How are you? Good. You guys all set up, huh? Hardly, but yeah, we 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 managed to to put it up just in time. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in a very small area. Well, the sign looks great. The sign, yeah, the sign the sign came out good. I'm more impressed with that one. It's about time. Oh we got yeah, sign. look at that. Actually above our booth. The big sign this year. Yeah. No missing us. I mean there's a way. That's right, high rollers now. That's honestly all you really need to know to play play. So here's the You kind of put a little, you change your control rod to a, to a sort of a, a plain 
Yeah, but now he's a bit sort of sticking with the blow to the head. You, know? <laughs> you can, you can. You guys, you guys, you guys like that. are cool, but what do I do with it? Are you like, no, it was, it was just have fun with it. Yeah, of course, you can do what you want. Yeah. They, they spent like, I think, four sessions, like, they, they just, I, I was, we could go to the business and they just kept, yeah, yeah. No, they, they just sat there and just, they, they, they upgraded, like they, they earned some money so they could pay for new furniture, and they, all right, so what, 250 for those? Uh, so, so much? no, what? so these are uh, 175, but today they're 10% off, so they're 157, I think it comes out to, so. Not just today, in person. Well, okay, for the weekend, all right. Yeah, but, but they're only going to last today. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh well, definitely. The one, <laughs> if you want, if you want to actually put it under your arm and take it home, I promise you, we will sell out. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah. So you can do that. We as have well. the starter series. Yeah, we have plenty of them if you want. Everything we send. And we also have the Marchman and Steel Legion. We the first two expansions. We have 50 available for sale. And evolution. So you can see everything. Uh, mid September, we're going to come out with the game for the Strike and So, I'm sure we saw the game. It's always hard. You can see the objects are sliding out and lights up the armor. This is either the The beginning only the light This is like 28. This is to win a thousand dollars of game toppers, by the way. And all you have to do is scan, scan, scan that, and it will say, "Where did you see it?" I will do that right now. I kind of want to win it. I can use a thousand dollars to play it and stuff. Uh, uh, cars that don't have that symbol. So if you go here, 
uh, you uh, like if you had uh, set up like this here right. uh, on a subsequent turn you could use a green die and do, do this action so many times and what this one does is it allows you to, to discard robots from the break room and one card uh, like so and it you, gives you points yep yep and so you could do that once with a one pip twice with a two pip and uh, three times three with a three pip what's really nice is if someone else comes here What about these? The stat cards and stuff. Presumably the actual salvers are right. in English. I assume that they're also like... They could also be double-sided. Yeah, flip them in their English. Because yes, understanding anything going on with the core fighter and stuff up there is... Get three 
I just yeah. try to conceal my crime. This one here. With an extra guard. And I can also power up at this point, right? I need it. Yeah,
Hey, I'm Sean from KTBG. It's Gen Con 2019. We're super happy to be here. And today we're talking about Fossilis. So in this game, you are going to play paleontologist exploring a dig site. And on your turn, you've got action points to spend to uh, move around the site, uh, dig a uh, certain material off, and you're going to be uh, spending plaster to extract different uh, dinosaur parts. And you're going to be working to uh, complete certain dinosaurs you and you'll get points if you complete you? the entire dinosaur or just parts of it and you're also doing some set collection along the way. Uh, you might also find some lost tools along the way and get some uh, special abilities that are going to give you an edge over the competition. So we've got uh, different hips, uh, uh, claws, bones, and uh, ribs and skulls, all with a different point value, and all which can complete uh, different dinosaurs. So we're super excited about this one. Coming to Kickstarter uh, this October, so uh, people can check out our website, uh, kidstableboardgame.com, and uh, look for updates on our Facebook page as well. So this is Rec Raiders. Uh, we just got this back from uh, Kickstarter. And what you're gonna do is uh, dice are gonna get rolled into uh, actually the box top. And uh, the dice are then uh, collected and we put this on what we call the reef. Depending if they cover uh, different shells, we're gonna put them on uh, the shell spots on the reef. And on your turn, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna draft dice and send your divers down to one of these four different wrecks uh, at the bottom of this lagoon and collect different uh, treasures that are on there. Now the treasures are gonna go on your personal board and you can either put them in uh, your vault, uh, in which case you're trying to get all of the same uh, type, but different uh, treasures themselves uh, on your different rows, or you're trying to put them in your exhibit hall here, where you're trying to meet the conditions of uh, different exhibit cards that are gonna show up throughout the course of the game. You, uh, as you go, you're also gonna collect uh, seashells, which each have their own special ability that can be used in different ways throughout the course of the game, or they can be exchanged to buy different parts of aquariums. And these aquariums uh, are always gonna have a bottom, uh, and uh, you can have as many nails as you want and if you can top it off that's going to be a formula the bottoms and the middles are all have a different point value to them but the tops are always a formula which are going to give you a point depending on how you've constructed that aquarium so uh, just lots of different ways um, to score points uh, throughout the course of the game now on uh, on the lagoon down here you'll see there'll be divers in different places if you place a diver uh, beside uh, a spot where there are other divers, you get something, but any adjacent divers also are going to get something. So in this case, yellow is really helping out purple. Purple is going to get two uh, treasures from this particular uh, this particular wreck. If you kick somebody out, let's say this yellow kick this yellow out, they're going to go up to the beach and they're going to and you're going to collect more seashells that way. So it's just a very fast flowing game. Uh, that introduces uh, dice drafting to younger players. that are intertwined in different ways. So for example, if the herbalist tried to heal the huntsman with her medicine and failed, and the huntsman died, that might work quite well for the deserter because he actually thought the huntsman was up to no good anyway, and it might work towards one of the two kind of paths that he wants to do. Right, so for example, I've got the herbalist here. Uh, I could drop into the inn, 
and it'll give me some options. Give me a bit of story about the current setting in the inn. You know, so the warm beacon of light in St. Tilly, the inn is typically packed full of patrons at this time of year, but not this winter. The few people who come here each evening prefer to sit in silence. The innkeeper calls you as you enter. I need to deal with Patrin, the Romani traveling trader. He is to return with payment two days ago. He travels around in a colored painted cart, easy to spot. If you see him, remind him that he still owes me four coins. And you're presented with a few different options. So the first one is to listen to some gossip and it ties into a test. I'll just actually fire this on. So as I mentioned, you have three stats here. Yeah. We're gonna try and listen in the end to find out what information we can gather. You have two base dice and you also have these effort dice that you can commit as you like, but once you commit them, they're gone. And you only get one effort dice back each day. It's like when you rest, essentially. So I look at my wisdom track and I'm gonna roll these dice, and as far as I get up the track, this is how many successes I will get. So if I manage to get to six, I'll get two successes. Ah. I have to get to 11 to get more. And you'll see that on the items down here, there are little representations of tracks, and this is where we put in, so far the Bloodhound, for example, gives me an extra success opportunity in strength, mm -hmm. and an extra one here in my dexterity. So the items and things you have, some will have passive effects, some will have active discard effects, and some will give you bonuses to your potential successes. So for example, if I want to listen to some gossip, it's probably going to be relatively easy, but I'll commit one dice to it, for example. So today I got uh, seven in this case, I would get two successes. If I happen to roll a, a success on the uh, effort dice, I would get an automatic success as well. So the, these are such of powerful dice that can be really, really good when you need them, but again, they go immediately uh, and don't replenish to the end of the day. Yeah. So two successes tells me this. Now this will be contextual, depending on how well you did and potentially what you already know. So I heard that our husband who lives southwest from St. Tilly is sick. Now when the wolves are on the hunt typo, he should be working all day long, someone should help him. So you're kind of told, okay, we know this is the Huntsman's Hut from the map previously, we know there's a point of interest here, which is what's represented by the tokens, but now we know that actually there's something we could potentially get involved in down there. But this could have been the deserter, the deserter could have gone up to the innkeeper and had this discussion, not necessarily us. Um, I'm gonna buy some provisions. So essentially I would basically pay a goal to the, the, the total, and we'd head into the deck of just wealth and stuff, right? Some of this is from adventuring, some of it's from purchasing the shop, some of it you'll discover, some of it's very particular to combat, that you, as exact as you expect. And for example, we have the travel rations here, which we would pop in our inventory, and it would give us a discard ability, and something we can sell, and more importantly, something that we can maybe scan in the future if we need something to actually see us through. I've got another option, because my turn doesn't end until one of two things, either I decide to end it, or until I'm forced to end it because I have an argument and no one wants to, he doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Like I pissed the innkeeper off and he's like, I'm done. So we can't now discuss it. So you have to kind of pick the order of your actions kind of carefully. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever you ask about something, you get your webcam on and you can essentially grab anything in your possession and ask him about it. So for example, I can even ask him about my destiny and the app will pick up on the fact that I have two options and hopefully the innkeeper might give me some insight on how I might complete this. The downside to this though is it's going to start giving the other players a bit of insight into what I'm after. Because they can Because yeah. they're going to learn it. So if I ask the innkeeper about my destiny, he says, haven't you heard what I told you about the money? I don't need to engage in other people's problems until I solve my own. Maybe the blacksmith will help you. He's always willing to get into trouble, right? So we've got the blacksmith who's kind of out by in the town square here, or we've got the huntsman that we could go and visit if we thought that maybe we could help him out. So now we've got a couple of options open up. I could, I could actually try and give back the four coins to the innkeeper now. If I had four coins, yeah, forget the trader. Here's the four coins that the trader owes you. I'll, I'll do that. Maybe I win some. Okay, here we go. We're about ready to do Odin's Redux. This is our first dive into True Dungeon. As we approach in line, it is, as they state, the true grind. Let's do this! In the land that our grandchildren do Don't you hear my call, though you're many years away Don't you hear me calling you All your letters in the sand Cannot heal me like your hand For my life still ahead Pity me Jocko, that's Knox. I'm going to Rear Water Street Bridge. Thank you, Jake, on 2019! Yeah, those are the big things. We did try to stick as close to the talisman. I mean, one of the cool things we were in the talisman were the body. That's too cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three pieces of 
trouble. You can choose one of those. Um, check for any orb attacks that only have a team. Uh, vehicles like that only have one vehicle there. Every day, today, up to Auctioneer. All right. 
War of the Spider King before Extinction. Uh, I need 15. It is near midnight lunch. I need 15 bucks. 15. Gen Con 2019 team, hopefully I will see you there next year for Gen Con 2020. And with that, click that like, hit the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them crits. This has been the McGuire Review, and I'll see you next time, Bear. Let's roll!